Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Bone Tool in Adobe Animate. The advantage of the Bone Tool is that you only have to create the character once and then you're going to rig it like a puppet and teach it how to move uh, using the Adobe Animate program. Uh, so I created my puppet in Photoshop and you can see that each body part is in a completely different layer. Now I'm going to create an HTML5 canvas with 24 frames per second in full HD. And I'm going to import my puppet onto the stage. So you just do file import, import to stage, but you have to convert each part of the puppet to a movie clip. Uh, the way you do that is, and once I've found my file and imported it, is you have to click on each layer, put what the name of the layer is, and then click to import it as a movie clip one by one. So each layer has to be imported individually. Now I want to note that uh, you switch the right and the left when you label the puppets because it's the puppets right and the puppets left. And um, the program doesn't understand spaces, so instead of a space you use an underscore. So once I have imported all my layers, each one is a separate uh, movie clip symbol. And now I'm going to uh, deselect them, and then I'm going to just select them one by one and move them so that they're slightly overlapping each other. So I just hit the selection tool and move them so they're all slightly overlapping each other. I'm going to start with the head, neck, and body, and then I'm going to click on the bone tool and I'm going to connect them all with what's called an armature. So I click on the bone and I start with the body and link up to the head and then uh, link down to the torso. So now they're all connected as if they have bones. An armature is like what a, uh, no, a puppet is like what a skeleton is on a human being. Um, now that little dot in the middle of each shape is the pivot point. So if you hit the free transform tool and you move that little white dot, it will change where it pivots. So you, obviously you want the head to, and neck to pivot at a certain point and the neck and body and uh, body and torso to pivot at a certain point. So you've got to change them. The other thing is if you hit the selection tool, you can constrain the movements. Um, if I if I click on the selection tool, let's see, first of all, if you click on the free select tool, you'll, you'll be able to change the pivot point. But if I click on the regular selection tool um, and I click on the pivot point, I can actually, there's a little box that I can click on the right hand side under properties that can constrain it so that the uh, movement is no more than 45 degrees, otherwise, you can have the person's, the puppet uh, flipping all over the place. So as you can see, it takes a little bit of tweaking. I'm moving the pivot point, and now I'm um, clicking on the selection tool. I'm clicking on it, and then I'm clicking constrain. And uh, the the default is negative 45 degrees to positive 45 degrees. Otherwise, you could have the head um, flipping all over the place. Now I'm testing out the movement. And if you look down in the timeline, you're going to see that it's called uh, armature or something or other. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename uh, it. It looks like a, a little running person, and that's the, the name of the armature. I'm going to rename it uh, body or head and torso, something like that. And remember, you have to use underscores. It doesn't uh, recognize uh, spaces. Uh, so now I'm, I'm putting the arms together and I'm making sure that they slightly overlap each other and uh, that's so that it doesn't look like it's falling apart when I try and move it. And once I've uh, connected the arms to the body and I have everything in the exact right position, I'm going to go down to the timeline, I'm going to click that little eye and I'm going to hide the head, neck, and body and that's so that I don't get mixed up and start connecting the wrong things. So now I'm going to, uh, when I select the arm, I'm going to um, 
if I want to select multiple shapes, you have to hold down the shift key. So I'm going to select the upper arm, lower arm, and hand while holding down the shift key. And then I'm going to use the bone tool to connect them. So I take the bone tool, I connect the hand, upper arm, lower arm, and wrist. Uh, it works absolutely the best if the body parts are slightly overlapping each other. Otherwise, when you try and move them, it's going to look like the person's falling apart. So take a moment to tweak them, make sure they're all in the right position, and maybe unhide the body to make sure that it's still attached to the arm. And then starting at the shoulder, you're going to connect the body parts. Now you can see the pivot points are all in the wrong spots. So I'm moving them so that the wrist and the elbow and the shoulder all have those dots in the correct spot. In order to do that, you have to click on the free transform tool and then click on the individual shape. So I'm messing around with that. And then I'm going to And then I'm going to test the movement to make sure that it's um, not falling apart when I move it. So I'm going to click on, on the select tool. I've got my three pivot points and now I'm going to uh, move my arm around and see if it looks correct. And sometimes you move it around, it looks like the three body parts are falling apart. So in that case, um, it's sometimes better to constrain them so that the angle doesn't move too extreme. Like you don't want the hand to flip around 360 degrees. Um, the other thing is I can see my pivot point is not at the correct spot. It's not at the elbow. So I have to click on that shape and fix that. Sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking. So I'm going to the free select tool. I'm moving my pivot point so it's at the elbow. And now my arm moves a lot more naturally. Um, so I'm just checking all my pivot points again, double checking. And I see that there's a little bit of a problem at the elbow. Sometimes it, it helps to zoom in on the frame a little more. My frame is at like 45 uh, percent so sometimes it, it helps to zoom in a little bit to get into the detail but I'm checking my pivot points again and double checking takes a lot of tweaking. So by making sure the body parts are overlapping each other make sure the pivot points are in the correct position and by clicking on each joint with the selection tool and constraining the movement finally I get it right. So I'm not going to make the same mistakes when I um, work on the next arm. After I've tested this arm and it's correct, I'm going to go to um, my next arm. First, I'm going to make sure that I name this armature, and I'm naming it right arm. Remember, I have to flip the right and left. And now I'm going to go over to the next arm, and this time I'm going to be a lot more careful. I'm going to set the pivot points before I rig the puppet. And then I'm going to unhide the body to make sure the other arm is in the correct position. I'm then going to rehide the body so that I can work on the armature for the other arm. So I select my upper arm, lower arm, and wrist. I'm going to use the bone tool and connect them. But before I do that, I'm going to select each section of the body and I'm going to make sure the pivot points are in the correct position before I even use the bone tool. And I'm also going to make sure all the body parts are overlapping each other properly. And then I'm going to start at the shoulder, go to the elbow, go to the wrist. I'm going to use the regular selection tool to constrain each part. So I click on the shoulder and I constrain it. I don't have to click on the elbow. Um, but I'm now going to click on the wrist and constrain that. And now I'm testing it out. And as you can see, the body parts do not fall apart when I move them. So now I can go ahead and I can uh, name that, go down to the timeline and name my armature. I'm going to name it left arm because remember you switch left and right. And you've got to use an underscore when you, um, when you, uh, instead of a space, it doesn't understand spaces. Um, 
And now it's time to work on the legs. So I'm going to take the legs, I'm going to move them, and I'm going to put them in position, make sure they're all slightly overlapping each other. It's the exact same process that I've been using, and then I'm going to hide the the uh, torso, head, neck, and torso uh, so that I don't accidentally connect anything to that because you want the legs, arms, and body to move independently of each other. This is going to be an exact repeat of the process that I've been using, so I'm just going to speed through it. I'm going to hide the head, neck, and torso section so that it doesn't get mixed up. And then I'm going to start rigging each leg individually. Uh, you always start at the part that's closest to the body. So I'm changing the pivot points uh, by hitting the free selection tool. And I'm going to start now at the, I'll do that with all of them. I'm going to start at the um, hip and I'm going to use the, I'm going to first select all three sections of the, um, of one of the legs. And then starting with the section that's nearest the body, I'm going to use the bone tool and connect them. There's all three sections connected. Hit the bone tool and go from one dot to the next dot to the next dot. Now I'm going to hit the selection tool. I'm going to click on each dot and I'm going to go over to the properties and click constrain. Uh, and that will make sure that it doesn't move uh, too much. Now you can see the leg kind of seems to be coming apart. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to move it up slightly so that it doesn't come apart. So you always test the movements of each section before you go to the next section. So now when I test the movements, I see it's not coming apart and I do the exact same thing on the other leg. It's always a smart idea to go down to the timeline and name each armature after you create it so you don't get confused as to which armature is which. And then you use the exact same process to rig the other leg. Once your entire puppet is rigged, you don't need the other layers. The only layers that you need in your timeline are the armature layers. So I'm gonna take a minute to delete all the extra layers that are underneath the armature layers. You should have taken your armature layers and just moved them up to the top and all the layers that remain underneath it, you can now delete. So the only thing you now have are your armature layers. Um, and then it's a good idea to just test the puppet out to make sure it moves the way you want it to move. And then you're going to start creating your animation. So you're going to select all five layers of your armature by holding down the shift key and selecting multiple layers. You're going to go out about five seconds and you're going to right click and insert a frame on all five layers. Then you're going to right click and you're going to insert pose. And then you're going to start moving your puppet. So I'm going to just start uh, pulling around my armature, changing the puppet's position. And then I'm going to go out about two more seconds. And I'm going to, again, select all five layers, right click and insert pose. I'm going to change the position of my puppet, go out about two more seconds, make sure I've clicked on all five layers, and insert another pose. And you just keep doing that until you have maybe 15 seconds of animation of your puppet dancing around. When you've played your animation and you're satisfied that it looks right, um, make sure you save your file and name it. And then you're going to export it the way you export any other video um, out of Adobe Animate. You hit um, File, Export, Export Video, and you click Export again, and it should go through the media encoder and be exported as an MP4. So that's how you use the Bone Tool in Adobe Animate in order to rig a puppet. It's a great shortcut because now you only have to draw your puppet once and once you've rigged it, you can control its movements.